Well, this movie's ruled me out of ever wanting to move into like a 50 styled house. If you are new here, I like to cover those movies that get less talked about and less reviewed and really just try and find a few hidden gems for myself and recommend on to you guys. So if you haven't yet, please do hit subscribe. It really helps out the channel. But anyway, on with the review. Mid-Century. Mid-Century is definitely one of the more interesting movies I've watched lately. It opens up in the 50s and there we see a couple who seem to have a really good relationship, but the landlord is just a little bit creepy here in the opening of it. You know, he's getting a little bit too involved, shall we say. And once this intro is out of the way, we're following Tom and Alice for most of the movie after this. So a little bit of set up. Alice is a doctor. She's had a job interview so they've rented this house so that she can complete the interview and work in the hospital. Tom is an architect and through a few different conversations we see that his business is finally taking off. So the conversation around do they move to a new place is definitely one that's up in the air for this couple. The longer they're staying in this house though they're starting to see some things that are a little unusual, a little bit creepy and overall it's just a very unsettling house and it's certainly an unsettling movie as well. The movie does jump between modern day and also the 50s and I think anywhere up to the 70s as well within these houses. So they were all designed and constructed by the landlord from the introduction, Frederick Banner. He made all these houses and he clearly had his own intentions behind them all. Intentions which really do make up most of this movie. The movie does a really good job though of just making you feel uneasy with it. It doesn't do a lot of jump scares, I don't really think it uses many at all, but what it does instead is it just creates this atmosphere of tension where somebody's watching or somebody's there. I will say though it really does overuse that trope of somebody walking past in the background. That's used a lot in this film and I lost count of how many times it even used it. But the movie's got a few other tricks up its sleeve to make you feel a little bit uneasy so that's fine. The link in here is really good because, because whilst Alice is in the hospital working away Tom's just left at home really to be kind of a house husband for the week and because of his job being in architecture Frederick Banner was a massive influence for him and he knows about him more than just what the main books put out. More than just the good stories he's got his suspicions as well that he was a little bit of a seedy fellow so he begins investigating on his own and try to find more out about Frederick Banner which could help explain what's happening in modern day. It didn't feel for First, and it felt like a very natural progression which was really good to see that he would have the information that he had. There is a little bit of tension here between Alice and Tom because of course the big conversation is around them moving but they shoehorn in a little bit of a B plot here and it's really no spoiler. Through a couple of conversations when he phones back to his office for his secretary, I think that's a secretary, they don't really explain her, but it's quite apparent that he's cheating on his wife with her. Now this is in a couple of conversations when he phones back home, him and his wife never talk about it and it just ends out of nowhere they just don't reference it and they don't come back to it. The movie would be the exact same if he just phoned his secretary and it was a platonic working relationship that they had. So I don't know why they felt the need to just add that in as well because the fact that he didn't want to move because his business was starting to do really well, that alone sets up his resistance to moving really well. So I don't know why they had to throw that in. But as we move on, a few other characters start to get involved and certainly the police get involved because early doors there is a murder. Somebody does die fairly early in the movie and the connections between them and and the couple here. Again, really good, really believable connections without feeling like a contrivance as well. So the police, and what I love to see in movies is when the police themselves, and you know, the partner, they have infighting themselves. It's not aggressive infighting, but there's a clear disagreement between who they pursue. And once more over than that, the one that wants to pursue the case and really look into things, even she isn't focused in on one suspect. She's keeping her options open and exploring a few, which you don't see too often. Normally the police just zero in on somebody and they will make it fit them. And here she's open to anything, which is fucking for the best when it comes to this movie. Frederick Banner though, when we see him in the flashbacks, I could not help. And <laughs> he is played by Stephen Lang, so you'll know his face. But the way they've done him in here, it felt like the villain of this movie was just Richard Branson. I couldn't unsee it once I seen it. I really don't want to say too much around this one because where the movie ends up going, you will not really expect. So I don't want to give any spoilers away. But everyone brought a really good performance into the roles. Alice thought, most of the events take place on a night where she seems to be working a back shift at the hospital. It was a very odd decision because the movie does feel really split between their two stories. And Alice doesn't really even have much of a story because she's in the hospital most of the time. You know, instead of having the couple both in the house and seeing what's going on or at least talking to each other, we really just have Tom that's dealing with everything. And then it cuts to Alice every now and again just for a bit of an update around her. It was an interesting decision. It didn't ruin the movie, but it definitely would have liked to have seen them as a couple together more whilst going through all this. 
Frederick Banner, who was the original architect of these houses, he had some secrets and a few things up his sleeve. And we start to uncover these as the movie progresses as well. Certainly with looking in on his backstory and even who's taken over the house now, there's a few other parties involved to really just pop up. The movie does tie everything up really well. The movie sets up his own rules though to tie everything up and explain things. And they're explained fairly well. Take a wee second, sit back and you'll understand where this film's going and what's happening. There is just a couple of moments in the movie which did just make me question why that was in there or if it was a bit of an oversight. And because the, one of them does kind of spoil the movie, I'm leaving this into I have questions. Just that part of the video where anything that I felt just stood out to me. I'm just going to touch on here, anywhere from minor to major spoilers. Now the first one is, how the hell did Alice not see him coming? She's in the middle of the street, looking in all directions because clearly she's scared and on the run. But he just kind of sidelines her from the back. How would she not have heard or seen him? coming out of nowhere. And secondly, so the plot is that Frederick Banner was in the occult. Ghosts are real, ghosts are around, and they want to take over bodies. That is the TLDR of this movie. So Tom dies in the film, and he has a lot of conversations with this ghost, one of the old wives that Frederick Banner had killed back in the 70s. She's still around. Now they're both dead. Tom has accepted his death at this point. She is also a ghost, and he is fully on board with this. Then she mentions Frederick Banner, to which Tom just replies that he's dead, and that should be the end of it. Mate, you're a fucking ghost talking to a ghost. Like, you at this point know that this can happen. Really, broaden your horizons. It just felt like a bit of an oversight, that kind of conversation in the movie, because why is that too far out of your realm of possibility at this point? But anyway, that is it for questions. Really, with this movie, though, you've got some great performances. Stephen Lang really is good as Frederick Banner. He is the main takeaway from this movie. He plays the role phenomenally well. The film looks really good. I thought the house got a little bit confusing, because it is one of those 50s style housing, where there's a lot of glass it's used. Like, way too much glass. So when you are walking around the house or it's showing you it from different angles, it does get a little bit jarring to try and remember where you are in the house because, although it doesn't take away from the film, I know me personally, I like to kind of know or have a rough understanding or blueprint of kind of where I am in a movie. This film didn't get it to me. Whether it was a living room or a guest room or just an entertainment area, that was a little unsure. Story wraps everything up really well. Didn't expect where it was going to go. Did quite enjoy it. Just kind of switch your brain off, let it take you over and enjoy it because the film explains everything that it's doing. Whilst I had a good time with this movie, I don't think it's one to be re-watching, so look, what I would say is, if you've got the time, you could go a lot worse than Mid-Century here. That was just some of my thoughts here on Mid-Century. Have you seen it? If you have, please do let me know what you thought down below. Do we agree or disagree? And if you are new, please do hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching.